Hey guys, thanks for joining me for another Dokkan Battle video, and today we're going to do a character guide on Android 21. So for those of you that are kind of new to my character guides, this is my first time doing one for Dokkan Battle. I previously did these for um, Dissidia Final Fantasy Opera Omnia. Unfortunately, that game is finding end of service. In Dokkan, I've just done character showcases, but I want to do a full encompassing guide. So if you're one of my Dokkan watchers, let me know if you like this format or not. So what we're going to do in this guide is we're going to start by reviewing the character in their kit. But then I'm going to go a little bit deeper than just doing a showcase. I'm actually going to go over who all of their 200% leaders are so that you know who all of your options are for leaders if you want to use this unit under a 200% leader skill. Um, I'm going to talk about their hidden potential builds and how you should build them. Um, and then talk about just some their best linking partners and characters you can run with them. And then we'll end with the showcase, right? So let's go ahead. We're going to start by looking at Android 21. This is the new Dokkan Fest. We're going to look at her kit. And I'm going to start by going over builds that I think work really well for her. Um, and then we'll start looking at the leaders and the kits, right? So here is Andre 21. Now, I did have some really good summons. I got her at 90% and I really didn't have to go that deep. I am still going to try to rainbow her just with whatever stones I get during the celebration. Um, but I'm not going to buy anymore. Um, so we'll see. I might end up rainbowing her, maybe not. But she's going to look really good here at 90%. She has max links, right? So her leader skill is Androids, Majin Power, and Peppy Gales for the 170. And then Power Absorption, Transformation Boost, and Crossover get the extra 30%. So she's got six categories, which is crazy. Um, but she kind of needs it because they are kind of like not as fleshed out categories. So I'm glad they just gave her a lot. So you have a lot of options for that, right? Her super attack effect, she raises attack and defense for one turn, does immense damage, and has a high chance to stun. And then the passive is attack and defense 150. All allies get two key. Another attack and defense 120 while attacking in a high chance of evading the enemy's attack after supering within the same turn. So the one thing with her dodge is she has to attack first. So she's definitely not going to be good in slot one, um, but in slot two, she'll be really good defensively with that dodge, right? She gets an additional two key and attack 60% um, for three turns when she does evade. What I would do, you guys, is I would not stress about getting that and trying to force that. Um, I would say just if it happens, it's a nice bonus, but she doesn't have to have that attack buff and she definitely doesn't need the key. The key is almost pointless. Like if you're running her on proper teams, like you're just not going to need it. Um, so yeah, I wouldn't stress about it. Just say if you happen to dodge and get that, then it's a nice buff, right? She launches an additional that has a high chance of becoming a super. Um, she launches another additional that has a great chance of being a super, starting from the turn in which she performs her third attack, disables the attacked enemy's action once within the turn after they perform their sixth attack once only, and then a great chance of performing a crit um, starting from their next attack, right? So once you get by... So this is a character that is meant to do a barrage of attacks, like a ton of attacks, and... Once you get to six, like then they just start getting built in crit, which is actually really cool. So um, when we talk about builds in a moment, there's actually like, this has been one of the more conflicted characters in terms of how I want to build them that I've seen in a long time. Um, it's a character where I can see justifications for a lot of builds, right? But we're not done. This character has a transformation, right? So she transforms through an active skill transformation, um, you have to be facing one enemy starting from the fifth turn. So it's pretty free and easy, right? And that's something you're gonna get in pretty much any red zone fight, um, which is what we're gonna showcase her in. So then she transforms into the good at transform 21. Um, on her super attack effect, she gets attack and defense for one turn, does immense damage and recovers 5% HP. Um, then she recovers 30% HP once only. So it's basically when you transform, you get that. Attack and defense 210, all allies two key still, plus an additional two key in attack and defense 121. Uh, when attacking, reduces damage by 21%. Uh, an additional defense 60 within the same turn after receiving an attack. Launches two additionals each, which has a great chance of becoming a super and recovers 21% HP when HP is 60% or less at the end of the turn. Um, so yeah, she's got a lot of recovery there. And the thing with this 21 she has 21% damage reduction, which isn't much, but I think her defense actually gets to crazy levels. And this is going to be a character that her starter turn defense is going to be deceiving because she gets 121% when she attacks. And then if you get hit and get that defense raised within the same turn, so if you do actually put her in slot one and take a hit, that's another multiplicative defense buff. So I think her defense will actually get to some really insane levels. Um, and by the way, look at this sticker. This is actually one of the better stickers I've seen in a long time. She's got a really, really nice sticker effect. Now, 
the reason why I'm like so conflicted on this character, and here we can look at, you know, uh, her links. And the one notable thing about her, she does pick up big bad bosses here. So I do take that into consideration when looking at her linking partners. Uh, but you can see the category she's on there, right? So let's talk about how do we build a character like 21. Um, so you're going to see my build here is I did go 21 crit, 7, or sorry, 21 additional, uh, 17 crit, and 7 dodge. Now this is a character that technically in her kit she has all of these things built in at some point right the dodge is only after she attacks in her first form um crit she has after doing six attacks the one thing i'm not a hundred percent sure of and let me read the passive one more time I, I so the part here where she gets crit after the sixth attack what i'm not sure of if is she holds that in her transform state i think she does I think if you do six attacks in her pre-transform, she holds on to that crit chance. So you can let me know in the comments if it works that way or not. Um, and then additionals, you can see in her kit, she has a bunch of built-in additionals, right? This is honestly a character where you could split and give her kind of a little bit of everything if you wanted to. So here are the justifications, right? If you're someone that is really concerned in her pre-transform state to get that 60% attack from her dodging, you could go, I could see the justification for a full dodge build and dodge will always help you in both forms, right? Because if you're not taking damage, you're not taking damage, that's great. The argument against dodge is she wants to get hit in her second form and you're going to lose the defense buff. But once again, if you dodge, then you don't need it. Um, she also does have dodge after attacking. So as long as you're planning to run her in slot two, you're going to get some built-in dodge and you're probably fine. I think additional, I will say this, I think additional is her most important stat. Even though she has a bunch built in, you want to proc the hidden potential combo as much as possible because you want to build up to her six attacks as quick as you can in her pre-transformed state. And in her second state, I think she's going to be dealing a lot of really good damage and you just want to keep dishing out the damage with her. And she's stacking defense on her super attack effects, which is really good. So I think combo attackers are most important. Now I did opt to go crit on her and lately in the game, I've been opting to go more dodge on characters, but... Um, I think because she's naturally just dealing so many additionals, odds are you're going to be hitting normals here and there and having crit on those normals is really important. And if you don't give her any crit, she won't have any until she gets that sixth attack. So it's nice to have that crit chance before. And then you're just kind of doubling down on that with a character. Once again, that's barraging with so many attacks. I think just crit is important to help deal damage. So what I would say for this is you don't have to build yours just like mine. Um, I would say I would prioritize combo attack first. And then in terms of crit or dodge, I think it's really your preference on that on how you like to build characters, right? So we'll kind of leave out that and you can see max links there. So now before we hop into the fight, let's take a look and I have pre put together some things to look at. So her 200% lead. So currently in the game, and when I do this, you guys, a couple of disclaimers, this is on global. Uh, in the future, this won't be a disclaimer because global and JP are syncing. We just don't know when. But as of right now, there could be leaders on JP or units on JP that work with 21 that I will not talk about. So an example is they got an MVP 17 and 18 Dokkan Fest that we don't have yet on global. I will not mention them in any way. So if 21 works on their team or they're good on her team, I'm not going to talk about that because I'm just focused on global right now. So just keep that in mind. But right now on global, actually this battle of wits, uh, Carnival Goku works as a leader. Uh, Rose Super Saiyan 3 is a 200% lead. Um, AGL Cell works as a 200% lead. And then obviously herself, right? Now, in terms of the more relevant leaders you're going to run her on, I'm going to do team builds for... My plan for these character guides is I'm always going to do a team build for like them as the leader. And then I want to do one other team build with another leader. So uh, I'm going to do a team build for Android 21 as the lead. And then I think out of these leaders, I think Super Saiyan 3 Goku Black is definitely the other leader you would want to run her on like his team, right? Um, she's not going to synergize well enough with the Carnival Goku. Cell she'll synergize with and actually have some links, but the Cell is too old and outdated. You don't want to run him as a leader right now, right? Obviously could change in the future. So those are 200% leads. Now let's look at her best linking partners. Um, her best linking partners obviously are going to be other 21 units. This unit with an EZA is actually looking really nice. Um, this unit is actually really good. The banner unit 21. STR21 is also a good linking partner, but I didn't include her because she's really outdated. So when I'm going to do these guides, I'm going to talk about characters that are more currently in the meta with some exceptions, right? 
Um, this new 18 that just came out, to me right now, she seems solid enough that you could run her as a floating option. Um, I would not run her on rotation, but this could be a situation where, so like one of my team builds, I'm going to recommend running STR Bulma. And STR Bulma is a really good slot one unit, but she doesn't share a crazy amount of links with 21. So what you would do in that situation is where a unit like this could come into play as a good linking partner is you would have Bulma slot one, Android 21 slot two. And then with this unit floating around on the turns where this unit floats around, 21 is going to pick up a lot of links and you're kind of almost running in reverse where like Bulma is kind of like the third slot unit, but she's in slot one doing what she does. And then that third slot unit is actually the linking partner. So that is an interesting way I think you could run that unit. Now this guy I'm bringing up, um, because Android 13, I I feel in the near future, is going to EZA and is going to be a really important linking partner that could work with big bad bosses um, and some of those things. And Android 13, I think, is going to be a very important Android EZA in the future. So I just want you guys to keep your eye on him. He is not good right now. And he was actually the unit people speculated for the EZA. I got to give myself a pat on the back because I predicted that the uh, LR17... Um, uh, 16, 17, and 18 was going to easy A, and I was actually right. So they're the ones easy a, e getting the easy A, not this guy. But I think this guy's going to get it soon. He's one of the more deserving units in terms of how old he is. Um, so he should be getting one. Um, specifically, if you're running the Heroes team or like the Super Saiyan 3 Goku Black, Hearts is technically your best linking partner for her. The unfortunate part is hearts is like a support unit for extreme class and she's actually not extreme so there's kind of anti-synergy there so i don't know how i feel about hearts with her at the moment and arts hearts is a year old i think it'll be more enticing like next year when he easy a's uh if he's due next year it might be the year after but whenever hearts easy a's it might be more enticing and then i want to throw out this physical lr boo after transformation will be a nice big bad bosses unit you can link with her. This is also a unit that's outdated, but I think could get an EZA within the next calendar year to keep your eye out for. And I think depending on how Majin power units are handled, I think what's cool about 21 is she synergizes with androids or with Majin power. So you can pick up links with either one. So if you want to do more of a Majin power build, this guy in the future could be a nice linking partner for you. Um, so let's look at a team build for her self-led team. Now, when I do these team builds, it's going to be kind of just like a general team that I think would flow and synergize well. It doesn't mean that's the best team for all content. And if you guys are new to Dokkan, Dokkan is a game where your team builds are going to actually constantly be changing. You're typically going to want to alter them to fit the fight that you're going against. An example could be a fight doesn't allow dodge, so you don't bring a dodge character, right? Or a fight might be a certain typing, so you adjust your team to have more type advantage units in it, right? So um, the way I like to think of my teams is two main rotations with floating, preferably support units. Sometimes you just float units so that are defensive and will survive, right? So the way this team build works is we really focus on 21 because she is the leader. So we run a 21 on rotation with the physical 21 and then run another 21 on rotation with Actually running on rotation with the int one, I think is viable. I've been playing around with this int one and she actually hits pretty dang hard for what she is as a support unit. And she works really, really good in that role. Now you could opt to float this and then do Bulma on rotation. And I think Bulma on rotation makes a lot of sense. So I think if you're being very competitive in like a red zone situation, you actually would probably put Bulma on one rotation and then physical 21 on the other one. And then you could still float this one. Um, and then we would float, here's the Android Trio, which at the moment are, are not good, but they're getting their EZA and I'm going to expect them to be very good. And they're a very nice Android support unit. So I'm going to expect them to be a really good option. And then floating something like Physical 17, I think is actually a great floating support option here. Um, I will talk about some other characters you could use. So for this particular team, here are just other characters that weren't on that particular build that you could run. And I think I got two sets of these. So I still think Int Cell is good enough to run and Cell units do have big bad bosses. So you could potentially run him. I think if you are going Majin Power build, um, LR Super Boo is a great option you can run. I think this STR EZA boost is still a solid option. Um, These guys, crazy enough, are still a legit option because they float in orb change and they still have a ghost usher which even though they have fallen off a bit offensively and defensively i think are still runnable um and then let's say you wanted i mean because she's got the peppy gal thing going for her you could just potentially say i want to run a little package of like kale and then kale and Khalifla like as a package or like 
Kale, it, it might not be the best on this team because Kale and Khalifa really want like, uh, you know, Pierce Saiyan, Pepe Gale, Universe 6 type setups because their kit kind of scales on it a little bit. But an example of like this Kale is very good. So provided there's another Khalifa or Kale you can put with her that's like meta relevant, like you could do that, right? And run them as like their own little tight rotation and then have a 21 rotation and float the rest. Um, some more options. I actually think this uh, Ant Ribrian could be a sneaky pick for her team. She's a very nice Peppy Gal support. She kind of got a... Uh, I thought she got actually a really nice, decent EZA that kind of just went like kind of hidden and unnoticed because Peppy Gals haven't really been relevant as a team and she's really geared on that. And I think now this 21 makes Peppy Gals a lot more relevant. And I, I'm telling you, this, this Ribrian's actually pretty good and she stacks defense. Now... You probably are going to have to feature her on rotation to stack her defense enough for hard red zone. But I'm thinking about tinkering around with her just as a floating support and trying her out. Maybe mid-level content. But she's, I think, could be potentially a decent option. Um, I would say don't ever count these guys out. Jero and 19 as a really nice Android support unit. Um, because they have a key nullification that's guaranteed, they can hang in red zone. Now, normals can really slap them up, I'm not going to lie, in some fights. But like... Eh. You, they're an int unit, so you can build them full dodge, and then any nasty supers, if you know you're going against a key blast fight, um, they actually are a nice unit you can slot in. Int Toa, great support you can run on any of her team builds. Um, STR Boo, again, another Majin Power option if you want to go that route. Um, and then the Gammas. The Gammas are still one of the best Android duos in the game. So you could simply... I've run the Gammas in two different ways. Um, I've run them each as like floating support options that can still do okay on their own in slot three. Or you just say, I'm going to make a gamma rotation and that, uh, that gamma rotation still slaps. I'm not going to lie. They're still very good. So let's say we go back to our original team build here, right? And you don't like the idea. Like maybe you're like, okay, this rotation is really solid, but you're like not so sure about maybe this unit. You're not so sure you want to run Boma on rotation. You want a floater. Uh, we'll throw the gammas down, make a gamma rotation. And then you can you just have to float the other 21 and then you pick your favorite supports out of the rest, right? So between those tools, I think you're going to be able to build a really, really nice 21-led team. And then the other example of a team lead I found was I think a Super Saiyan 3 Goku Black-led team I think is her best spot on Heroes if you want to do like a Heroes crossover build. So I would do that. Heroes and crossover, guys, there's so many ways you can build a team. So if I were just doing like my ridiculous like beat stuff down type of team... I would just run, you know, Rose and Vegito together. <laughs> like, just do AGL Vegito. He's one of the best units in the game. Uh, this guy could float or just be a rotation with Vegito. Um, and then you could just run these 21s as a rotation once again. Um, if you don't want to run this 21, you could just run a different Heroes unit. Uh, maybe just slap 21 with, uh, you know, one of these other units. They're not going to link the best. Uh, but it's something you definitely could do. And then on the Heroes team especially, I think Toa is a nice slot in there as well. So uh, anyways, guys, there's all the team builds, all that stuff. So with that, let's hop into a little showcase here. So let's go back into my team build that I have right here. Um, and right now we are on Red Zone Cell. And I do not want Icarus. No, no, no. We want to bring the Whis in. Uh, so we want to see how my girl is doing here. So let's grab the Whis, the Whis, the Whis. Where are you at? I am blind. There he is. All right, so let's go ahead and hop in and see how my girl can do. Uh, we do have a rainbow 21, so we're going to look at a 90% and a rainbow one. Um, I'm not sure what the links are looking like on the other one, uh, but we'll see here. All right, so we do have a really, really nice setup turn one here, right? So let me just try to do this. We can segregate. So with, I guess she is getting three links with Bulma. That might be the rotation, right? Obviously, we get more with the int 21. But yeah, like this right here, I mean, this is the way you run it. We're getting six out of seven right there. Uh, we got Bulma in slot one. I mean, this is the great, I think this is how you run the rotation. Now, she's starting off at 256k defense, right? Not the craziest, but remember, deceptive unit gets defense here. Uh, and then gets defense here, win attack, and do 120%. I think, and with, you guys have to remember, with all of the additionals putting out, that she's putting out, you're getting these defense stacks every time. So I think even pre-transformed, you know, based on RNG luck here, um, actually, I'm going to intentionally with Bulma not get seven orbs, because I don't want her pumping out the guaranteed additional. I want the cell to live a little bit longer. Um, so we're going to do this. And how is Int 21 looking? Yeah, 224k defense. Um, she only gets attacked there. I just want to double check. Does she get defense? 
Um, and she, she, she does scale a little bit more in androids and power absorption. So Bulma like will bring her down a little bit, but this isn't her showcase, but, uh, we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. All right. Let's let her attack here and let's just see how this first turn goes. All right. And then Bulma's just going to do her thing in slot one. I think it's just a general rule. You guys, if Bulma fits on the team, even if it's like, um, even if it's like only a 150 part of the lead or something, she's still worth running. Like, so even though Bulma only getting the 170. So we're starting off at six mil, which isn't that bad considering she's got all of the additionals. And remember, oh yeah, we're stunning here too. If she happens to get a dodge, she's going to get another 60% attack and be putting up some crazy numbers. So because of, I think of how defensive she is, I think like in all the attacks she's putting out, you know, six mil is a little bit of a lower attack stat. But you can see here just on her stacking, she's already up to 7 mil. And she is, dude, a quad super. She's just showing out right away. First turn, we did a quad super and we stunned, I think, pretty much every time. Um, and I do like this cell with stun units to show like how often stuns hit. And she performed very well there on the stuns. We'll just say that right now. The stunning was on point. So ridiculously good first turn for my girl 21. Uh, here's the friend 21. Let's just check out her links. Let's see. Yep, this is max link. So we can directly compare a 90% to a rainbow. Um, now this one's at 300k defense, but 17, remember, gives a lot of defense support, but he's not giving offensive support. Um, and then we got 268k for the physical one. Uh, we'll let physical 21 take the lead here. Physical 21, by the way, um, if I do, by the way, like these character guides, I'm only going to do these on like the main Dokkan Fest and Carnival units. I'm not going to do these on all the banner units. So for like the banner units, the free to play stuff like that, I'll probably just stick to the regular showcase format that I've been doing. Um, but I'm going to try to do these more extended character guides on the main units, if that makes sense. But with physical 21, what I'm kind of talking about there is that, um, you really want to focus her uh, make sure she gets her attacks in because she's got a four turn defensive stack that you want to carry over. So you got to make sure she's attacking. All right, so here we are floating the Toa. Um, and yeah, we're just going to leave the rotation as is. We're at 239K start of turn defense. Um, she doesn't have a chance to dodge here and she's probably going to stun out anyways, which is fine. Uh, after the Balma support, 269K defense. Uh, Toa's at 250. Toa is another unit that gets quite powerful if she starts dodging. <laughs> Toa needs three dodges and she starts outputting some damage. Um, in Toa, I know when I did her showcase, kind of shocked me. I was doing like 11 mil attack stats with her. Uh, when you when I focused her on rotation with a linking partner. Yeah, I'm Balma tanking like a boss. She's doing her thing. All right, 7.5 for her. Very nice. And then a 4.8. Yeah, Bulma will look a little bit weaker on this team, but she's still the GOAT. Like, she's still amazing. Uh, she's just pulling out the triple super for me. That's fine. We'll take it. But yeah, right now, I think between Red Zone Cell and then the Dismal Future event, these are my favorite showcase stages. So we're just opening up at 6.5 again. And once again, let's see how many additionals she's going to get. And the crits are going to start flowing really heavy because, yeah, so we got that stoppage there. So that was the fifth attack we nullified. And now at this point, she's got even more built-in crit. She's going to be critting almost every time because I gave her decent crit. And she's got built-in crit in her passive. So I'm expecting a lot of crits and a lot of damage out of her. I would say this, out of like the regular Dokkan Fest this year, you know, when we're comparing her to like, you know, Turles and... Um, like even the 17 and 18 and some of these units that JP's gotten, she's looking to be one of the better ones. She is looking very nice. All right. With type advantage, I'm definitely fine with physical 21 and slot one, uh, physical 21, 377 K. All right. And then the friend 21 here is at 300 K start to turn again. All right. Let's see what we got. We want uh physical 21 to get some additionals here. Physical 21 is a unit that just eluded me. Um, got my AGL 21 to 90%. Only pulled one physical 21. It's kind of crazy. I'm hoping I can get at least one more of her before I get the rainbow. Uh, it would be nice to get a dupe path into her because additionals on her are so good. And I need to put more on her. All right, so we do have the transformation. So we're going to hit that up. And I do think I am going to turn the animation on. Uh, for this video. So let's go ahead and do that. I, I don't think I'm going to put the sound on. I'm just going to play it. 
<clears throat> but here we go. Going into the transformed state. Dude, and 21 is such an awesome character. I'm going to say this. Like, I played fighters, and I'm not a fighting game person. I actually very much dislike fighting games. But I picked up fighters because it's Dragon Ball, so amazing, whatever. And I honestly just enjoyed playing through the story and watching all the cutscenes with 21. Like, I found somebody on YouTube that had, like, just the cutscenes from fighters. And it was literally like a three-hour movie. Like, it was crazy. Uh, and I really enjoyed it. It was a nice story. So I hope that... Um, someday they decide to animate it and like make it canon because I think 21 is a super cool character. All right, so now we are fully transformed. Uh, we're linking up actually with 17. Yeah, we are linking up. Dude, Balma slot one really is working because these floaters just link so well with her, right? So we're at 316k starter turn defense. Remember, we get defense here. Um, and then she is going to get another 121 while attacking. She's got the damage reduction. Now, if you put her in slot one, though, and she gets hit, you get 60%. Um, I might do, should I do that? <laughs> put her in slot one? I think I am. I'm going to test the waters here a little bit defensively. I'm hoping Cell doesn't just immediately super, which he likes to do. Um, I'm hoping that he will at least hit her. Let her defense, ideally he gets, he supers after she attacks. Because I actually think she's going to tank. Um, sure, five orbs with Balma is fine. Just don't super immediately, please. I supering immediately. She's going to take damage here because she's missing a ton of defense. Yeah, 466. It's such a shame because she's going to look so much better after. Like after this, I would not be surprised if it were double digits. Um, but this is good because now we can look at the healing because these 21s heal like crazy. 7.1. Because remember, if I'm not mistaken, I'll double check it, but I think she heals every super attack. I could be wrong though. It could be a different 21 I'm thinking of. I think it's the int one that heals every time she supers actually. This one though will heal, you know, on transformation. So like we can transform the other one next turn and get like a nice 30% heal. So that's good that we can just show that off at least. So I don't mind eating that. But I really wanted to see the damage afterwards. Cell is such a butthead. Alright, so we'll let Balma flow here do her thing. But yeah, you guys let me know if you're liking 21 or not. I think she's great. Um, I do really like her. She's definitely not like a must pull. Um, she's someone I definitely went for because she's a favorite. I think 21's a super cool character. Um, and I've liked her ever since I was introduced to her in Fighter. So... Um, Excited for potentially maybe another 21 is the part two LR. Oh, and the cell multi supers. He should tank well. Oh, he didn't. We actually died because the thing with 17, his damage reduction, our health has to be, I think, low at the start of turn. That's unfortunate um, because I wanted to see a little bit more out of her. Ah, uh, do we go in again? Did we see enough of 21? I mean, we technically did because she doesn't build up, right? So you're seeing like seven mil attack stats i think once again it's deceiving but after super i think her defense is really good i think that is enough to call it a showcase because once again we didn't really miss any build up or anything she's gonna be in like that seven to eight mil attack stat range critting a lot doing a lot of additionals i think she's gonna be like maybe a million defense or more after super depending on how things line up if she gets hit and all that so anyways guys let me know what you think of this 21 thanks for watching we'll catch y'all on the next one